Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation. We have sine x to the 6th power plus cosine x to the 6th power equals 7 over 16 and we're supposed to solve for x. At this point you may just pause the video and try this problem yourself or maybe come up with some outline or idea or you may continue to watch it. Alright, let's see what we can do. We've done a similar problem before, well in the similar in the sense that it was also sine x and cosine x with eighth powers but the approach to that one has, was actually different than this one because with the eighth power we are using uh, the half angle or double angle formulas with this one we're going to be using a different approach since six can be written as two times three it has a three in it so that's going to make it very very special all right without further ado let's see what we can do about this problem okay so i'm going to start with the pythagorean identity which is well known hopefully by lots of people right so i have sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one okay this should be well known right okay cool what can i do with this right i do have six powers well i said that six is equal to two times three so i think it would make sense if we cube this expression wouldn't it okay well at least it's worth a try right you can also write sine cubed plus cosine cubed and square it, but we have no information on the sum of the two cubes. While we might get it, yes, that's another path we may follow. But we're, go we're just going to do it that way. Okay, so, and what happens if you do it that way? You're going to be taking this expression, all right, and then you are going to square it. But you don't know what this equals. You're going to be getting, obviously, this term, these two terms. And then you're going to be getting 2 times sine cubed x cosine cubed x. So you would need the product there. That would make things a little harder. You can write it in terms of sine x, sine x and cosine x, but that would probably take you longer and complicate things. Okay, let's see what we can do here. So I'm going to square both sides. Well, did I say square? No, I meant cube. Okay, never mind. We're going to cube both sides. Okay, what happens if we do? So let's go ahead and remember the cube of a sum. Okay, that comes from the binomial theorem, right? What is a plus b cubed? Well, I can write it as a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. Or there is actually a cooler way to write it, which I like very much. I can write it as a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab multiplied by a plus b. And I think in another video... I had told you that if you factor this, then take out a plus b, you'll get another identity, which is known as the sum of two cubes. Okay, but that's not what we're going to deal with here. So, if we use that particular version, then we're going to be getting something like this. Sine squared x cubed plus cosine squared x cubed plus... 3 times sine squared x cosine squared x multiplied by a plus b, which is sine squared x plus cosine squared x. So what's so beautiful about having this term inside the parentheses? It is equal to 1. So isn't that awesome? Yes, I think it's awesome. So that is equal to 1. So I don't need it, right? So my expression, but remember... We had an equation, we cubed both sides. So the right-hand side is equal to 1. Awesome. So then we have the following. Sine x to the 6th power plus cosine x to the 6th power plus 3 sine squared x cosine squared x equals 1. Awesome. Well, things simplified a little bit. It's better. What are we going to do here? Well, we do know the value of sine x to the 6th power plus cosine x to the 6th power. It's given. So we might as well substitute, right? So let's go ahead and substitute that into our equation. So this is going to be 7 over 16 plus 3 sine squared x cosine squared x equals 1. Then what I'm going to do next is subtract 7 over 16 from both sides. And that's going to give me 3 sine squared x cosine squared x is equal to 1 minus 7 over 16, and that is going to equal 9 over 16. Awesome, right? Beautiful. Okay, what am I going to do with this? Well, you might be thinking, oh, okay, 
we can do the following. Yes, definitely that's a path you can take. And what is that path? Okay, that path looks like this. You can go ahead and replace one of these with the identity. For example, well, first of all, I think you would, you would do this, right? Sine squared x cosine squared x is equal to 3 over 16. So you would divide both sides by 3, I think. And then what I can do with this is, well, I don't know which one to convert, but I'll, how about turning cosine squared into sine squared? Okay. What I can do is I can replace sine squared, I mean cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared, right? Awesome. And then distribute this, and then I'll be getting sine squared x minus sine x to the fourth power. Uh-oh, we got a cortic, but don't worry, it's going to simplify. And now put everything on the same side and call sine squared x or set it equal to u. Then you would be getting u would be getting u squared minus u plus 3 over 16 equals 0. Okay, obviously this is a quadratic equation which is very easy to solve. Okay, well if you go this path you're going to find sine x, first you're going to find sine squared x. Okay, if the solutions are positive they're good and then you'll take the square root you're going to find sine x from there hopefully you're going to be able to find all the solutions. But that's not what we are going to do here. We're going to do it differently and I think this method is cooler. We can always argue that. Okay, I'm going to proceed in a similar manner. So I'm going to divide both sides by three, right? I already got that result, so I don't need to really make a big deal out of it, right? So I already divided by three, so I know the result, okay? This is three over 16, but I'm going to do something real cool here, okay? What am I gonna do? Well, I'm going to square root both sides. Isn't that awesome? Well, you haven't seen everything yet. Why is it awesome? You'll see in a little bit. Okay, let me go ahead and square root both sides. Obviously, we're going to get two results. We have to be very careful here. So we're going to be getting sine x cosine x equals root 3 over 4. Now, you might be thinking, what is so special about root 3 over 4? It's not, it doesn't look very special. It's actually going to be very special in a little bit. Okay, so stay tuned. All right, so now notice what we did here. We took an expression, which is always true, and we cubed both sides. We didn't square both sides. So if any extraneous solutions could get in, they didn't because we did not square both sides. So any path is going to be fine here, meaning that I can go work with the positive solution or I can work with the negative solution. But let me tell you what. They're very similar, but I'll show you both and then the rest will be very easy. Okay, let's see how we can proceed. You might be thinking, like, what am I going to do? Am I going to replace cosine x with the square root of 1 minus sine squared? No, no, no. We're not going to do something crazy. We're not going to do any radicals here. We're going to be very smart. We're going to be very smart and use a very, very smart method here. Okay, so for that purpose, let's go ahead and pick a color here. Okay. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides of this equation by 2. And do you know why I do that? You must know why I do that. Because 2 sine x cosine x is equal to what? You must know this. This is a super important identity. It is equal to sine of 2x. Beautiful. So now I got sine of 2x is equal to square root of 3 over 2. The rest is a piece of cake. But let's just do it. And similarly, we're going to do the same thing for the other piece. Now, how can I solve this equation? Well, I have to think about the, the acute angle, the smallest angle whose sine is equal to root 3 over 2. And that is going to be pi over 3. So one of my solutions is going to look like 2x is equal to pi over 3 plus 2n pi. And then if I divide both sides by 2, x equals pi over 6 plus n pi. So this is going to be one of my general solutions. The second one is going to come from the fact that sine is symmetrical with respect to the y-axis. So first and second quadrant, right? So I can also replace pi over 3 with 2 pi over 3, which is 120 degrees, by the way. Its sine is also going to equal root 3 over 2. Therefore, 
I'm going to be getting my other solution, which is pi over 3 plus n pi, where n is obviously an integer. Okay, awesome. So those are two solutions in the general case. What about this one? Well, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 again. And this is going to give me sine 2x again, right? But this time I'll be getting a negative result, which is okay. This means that we are supposed to be in the third quadrant. So if you think about it, now this is like 60 degrees, right? If you extend it, that's going to put you here, right? And what is that going to look like? Okay, that is going to be how many degrees? Well, that's going to be 240 degrees, right? 240 degrees. And how do you write that in radians? 240 degrees is just going to be 4 pi over 3, right? Awesome. Plus 2 and pi. If you divide both sides by 2, you're going to be getting 2 pi over 3 plus n pi. Awesome. That's another solution. And we have one more. Okay. What's the other solution? Well, you can just reflect it, right? And you're going to be getting this one, which is what? That's going to be 300 degrees, right? And 300 degrees, how can you express that? That's going to be 5 pi over 3. Okay? Right? Okay, cool. So you can just go ahead and write it that way. Actually, 5 pi over 6, right? Not 5 pi over 3, okay. Yeah, 5 pi over 3 would actually be... Uh, no. 5 pi over 3 is correct, yeah. That was right the first time I said it. Okay. 5 pi over 3, but when we divide by 2, yep, it's going to be 5 pi over 6. Here we go. Okay. Awesome. So from here, we're going to be getting 5 pi over 6 plus n pi. All right. So those are going to be my solutions to the equation which was given in 6 powers. Sine x to the 6th power plus cosine x to the 6th power is equal to 7 over 16. All right? Well, that's it for tonight or today. However you want to look at it. I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And take care.